we have some overcast skies right now, so I thought I would give you a little garden update. My our peas are doing very well. These are peas that I seed saved myself last year and replanted. I do have some that I'm letting get bigger and they will dry and I will um, seed save from these for next year as well. So I have um, some scattered throughout all the plants that I'm letting go ahead and go to seed. But so here's our peas. And these are Amish snap peas. Um, they're an heirloom. I planted bok choy this year. We've already harvested all of it except these two plants right here. Um, I'm letting them go to seed so I can seed save. We have some green beans coming up. And on the bok choy here you can see these green pods. Once they are dried out, this is what I will save the seed from. And then here we have some calendula. I planted this from seed last year in another place and when they came back up, well, you know, the seed, then I just transplanted three plants over here, or maybe it was nine, I don't remember. Anyway, I've been harvesting some of the heads off of them. So we can do some calendula salve and also have some calendula tea. We have some more green beans and spinach. <clears throat> and these are tomatoes that um, dropped seed last year and I'm just letting them do what they want right now. And right here, this, and right here, um, this should be a tomatillo. I planted a tomatillo seed right there and another one right there. So <laughs> that's what they should be. We will see. Okay, so just kind of an overview here. Um, everything in the garden, I plant from seed directly in the ground. I don't seed start indoors. I do not buy seed. I do not buy little seedlings, you know, little plant starts. Um, I just find that by planting seed directly in the ground, my plants do better. But yes, um, my harvest is a you know, a couple weeks later than other people's, um, and that's perfectly fine with me because my plants seem to be stronger and healthier, and they just seem to do better. So that's what I do. So that's just a little, you know, tidbit here. So everything you see um, was all from seed directly in the ground, everything except the petunias and the marigolds, but everything else, okay? All right, um, over here, course we have some more peas tomatoes and here we have some kale this is Italian Nero kale I think it's also called like a dinosaur kale because of the bumps like a reptile skin um, we have been harvesting this and eating it but obviously we're not the only ones um, we actually don't have any cabbage worms on this kale but we have something else that's eating it i'm not sure what um but it tastes good then we have our stevia oh sorry the stevia i also i did buy the seedlings on that here we have some red russian kale and we've been harvesting on this i come out here every couple days and harvest it and um today's day two so i'll be harvesting as well this kale um, it also tastes good and then over here, we have some basil, and here we have some tomatoes, like here's a, this is a black crim tomato, and this is one also, like everything, that was started from seed in the ground. Here we have some green beans, and yeah, I'm letting the dandelion do its thing. More green beans, carrots, and in between all of this are little tomatoes. Okay, basil, more carrots, more tomatoes here. So these tomatoes right here, these three, and then that one, those are ones that I seed saved last year. Those are San Marzano, and I seed saved them last year and planted them, and um, 
They all came up, but I did plant one here that did not come up. So four out of five came up. Or maybe it did come up and the chickens or the cats, I don't know. Anyway, more carrots and green beans and more tomatoes there. I did not plant any tomatoes here. And here, these are also black creme. And we have um, three different varieties of tomatoes. We have black creme. Abe Lincoln and San Marzano. Now the bulk of my canning tomatoes I actually get from a local uh, Mennonite lady. Those are the ones I the ones I get from her are the ones I actually can for our year. Um, you know to get us through the year. Simply because I don't have enough space in the garden yet to grow enough of everything yet. Okay, so this bed here, we have petunias. They're my favorite flower. And I'm sure you can see what all the green beans are. Okay, so we have some different varieties of green beans here. And these are carrots we planted last year. I mean, sorry. These are carrots we planted this year. They're ready to harvest. These, all of these flowers, these white ones, these are all carrot flowers. So um, I left some carrots in this bed from last year to overwinter. For two reasons. One, so I can, so I could harvest during the winter some carrots. So that was fun and nice. And then also to let them go to seed like they're doing here in order to get carrot seed to plant for next year. So when these flowers are pollinated and dried, then I will save the seed and plant for next year. Carrots, just like beets and kale, they are a biennial. The first year is when you get your food crop, and the second year it'll go to flower and to seed. So that's what we're doing there. Then here we have some rutabagas in this corner, and rutabagas in this corner, and yes, we have cabbage worms. Let's see. You can see the cabbage worms here. I'm about ready to pull these up. Um, last time I checked, they were almost ready to harvest, and then we'll burn the tops. Okay. Then there's some more green beans, and there's a bunch of, um, there's several dirt daubers flying around here. Okay, now over here in this bed, we have some broccoli, and again, we have terrible trouble with cabbage worms, cabbage moths here. Um, every place we've ever lived, we've never had any trouble, but here they are our primary problem. The neem oil, you know, it works if you're consistent enough and you get it before the eggs are laid. After the eggs are laid, it doesn't do any good. Um, hand picking them off, you know, we do that. The best thing that we have found is barn swallows and wasp. Um, so, but they're not doing, we're not really seeing any wasp. And the barn swallows aren't doing as good as they normally do. But anyway, I'm not too worried about it. We'll, uh. We'll plant a fall crop instead and, and work on that for our main harvest. And here we have some beets. We've already harvested some of them. I need to harvest the rest because they're ready. Here we have some dwarf blue curly kale right here. Um, this is really good. This is probably my favorite. It's not really, there's not much of a difference in flavor between that and the Italian Nero or the Red Russian. But I might like this a little bit better. It does seem... Now, the Red Russian doesn't have any pest damage either. Um, the Italian Nero, you saw it had some kind of pest damage. This doesn't. And this is so vigorous and productive. We have harvested this so much. I mean, you see I have, what, like four square feet here. I think I've already harvested three gallons of kale. Um, and I need to harvest it again. It's like about every day, day and a half, I need to come out here and harvest it. So here we have some arugula in this two square foot area that we're growing it. We have harvested, I think, three or more gallons from it. It did really well this year. Um, the So we're letting it go to flower, as you can see. And when the seeds are, here's the little seed pods. Whenever they are done, I will collect these seeds for planting next year. Here we have some marigolds, some more beets that we've already harvested off of, some cabbage, but again, the cabbage worms are just, you know, destructive. 
Um, I have found that the early golden acre, which is what these are, they seem to be a bit more resistant to the worms than the Copenhagen. So, which I actually prefer the early golden acre. I just had some Copenhagen seeds, so I wanted to go ahead and do those. But anyway, I will be just tearing these up. Okay, and then we have some nasturtiums that we planted from seed here. So this week, we've got to take up the cabbage. Then we have some Swiss chard here. We've harvested a lot of this already. We just put these beds in. So you might remember that these four beds, they used to have totes in them, and they used to be over there. You can see where the, they used to be, right there. Um, but we decided to put them together and take the totes out. So these beds are filled about half full to three quarters full with just logs, wooden logs. And then, um, then it's filled with what I call junk dirt. And then it has thick cardboard over the dirt and then it's filled with some good mulch. And then it's filled with uh, better dirt here on top. Okay. So we just got these done. So these things just got planted just last week. Um, so we have a couple zucchinis here, um, a couple cucumbers. Over here, this is our hot peppers. Um, so we have jalapenos, poblanos, cayenne, and Hungarian, uh, black Hungarian. And this is the black Hungarian. You can see it has a, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it'll have, it'll be more purpley and the actual, uh, pepper will be kind of a purple color but it has a purple stem and purplish leaves but uh, anyway they're doing good right here we put in three rows of okra and it's coming up and doing well these are okra that I seed saved a couple years ago um, I'm not quite sure what to plant here and then over here we just mounted some dirt up and put some mulch or wood chips around it and leaf mulch and stuff. So we have 11 of these little markers here. And some of them have, this is a butterbush squash. This is another butterbush squash. Whichever one's stronger, I'll take the other one out. And some cantaloupe, watermelon, a pumpkin that's just starting to come up. Right there. I planted two in each spot. Okay, this one's just starting to come up. I need to water it. Haven't watered this morning. And I actually didn't water it yesterday. I'm not very good about watering. A cantaloupe. Watermelon. Cantaloupe. Pumpkin. And the pumpkin seeds are also old. They're from 2012. Watermelon pumpkin. All of our seeds are actually pretty old. Um, so you might remember in another video how I talked about having this whole fenced area being our medicinal herb garden. I don't know if they'll come up yet or not because again I am terrible about watering but um, I did plant some seeds. I planted this area right here of Ella Campaign and then this of the Angustifolia Echinacea which they say is hard to start from seed in the ground, but I did it last year elsewhere. So we'll see if these come up. Then we have some mullein. And then I don't have anything here yet against the fence, but then over here where this log is with the yellow things, that one has, um, half of it is St. John's wort and the other half is um, skullcap. And over here, our marshmallow from last year, it is just starting to bloom. Beautiful. Anyway, I have harvested some leaves off of this already. And here, again, I need to water. <laughs> um, we've harvested already so much um, chamomile, but I need to harvest some more. Here we have some feverfew. So this is feverfew, all this, all this, and St. John's wort right here. 
I really got to come out and work in here, but we've just been so busy. Oh, look, 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 the first one. Look, St. John's wort flower. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Oh, that's exciting. All right, so I'm going to be harvesting these soon. There's an echinacea over here. There's some more calendula, and this is some anise, anise hyssop. I'm still not sure how the proper way is to pronounce that. And then our asparagus. We've already harvested some, cut some down, and yeah. Okay. Here's our elderberries. Um, our elderberries do very well every year. Um, I think we still have like five gallons left from last year. Um, they are just extremely productive. I have been harvesting flowers primarily for this year, but there's no way I can get them all. It's just such, it's so thick. But the bees love them, our honeybees do. And but you can see like how long it is. I think it's a, is it 15 feet that way? Maybe more. And then might be 20 feet that way and then um, 15 feet this way. Anyhow, once upon a time, as of February, there were two definite rows. This row had three plants and this row had three plants. And this middle, you could walk through. <laughs> um, it's just crazy. Every February, I thin it out and cut it down to about five feet tall and it just does this. Um, anyway, does really well. Um, so here, this is our strawberry bed. We've harvested so many strawberries. Um, I know I've got to mow. This back fence here is yarrow. The shorter white flowers are yarrow and the taller up there, that's all blackberries. So this is an onion that I let, I left in the ground last year and it's going to go to seed. And our, our blackberries, they are doing very well. You can just see, they're just <laughs> looking forward to that. I wish you could smell elderberry flowers. The smell is just soft and light and just, I don't even know how to explain it. It just smells so good. And just walking outside, it just, you know, the scent is in the air of it. It's just wonderful smell. Okay. Over here. Now, we have not had our usual rain in the spring. Um, it's been very dry and it's been hot. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so this wildflower patch here kind of starts here and it wraps, it goes all over here up to there. Um, we've had some beautiful blooms. I don't water it. I just let nature do its thing. So um, some of it is just, you know, done because it's time. Um, others are doing okay, like echinacea, you know, it it likes this environment. The bachelor buttons, I just love. More echinacea. Anyway, it's one of my favorite, it's actually my favorite spot in the garden. It's just starting to sprinkle. We have a small chance of rain today. Not much rain, just a passing shower. So I'm looking forward to that up there. Those are some more flowers that we planted a few years ago. Our fruit trees up there, our herb garden right there. Okay. Anyway. Um, so here we have some strawberries and blueberries and rhubarb. Um, our strawberries have done fabulous this year. Um, we've got so many strawberries. Well, the ones that the uh, roly polies would actually let us have. Roly polies have been insane. They've been eating our strawberries this year. It's just been crazy. All right. That is just our 
tour of what's of the update in the garden. So I hope y'all's garden is doing well. Thank you for watching.